Right. Yes, we should be live on Facebook now, Henry. Welcome. Great. Thank you very much. Nice to be with you today and welcome to everybody who's with us today. We have our Facebook live today on the balanced view page so that uh, even more people can watch and we're very happy to have the wonderful Henry Dingle with us live from Bristol. Thank you so much, which is the UK for anybody who wouldn't know. So welcome again and thank you for joining us today, Henry. Oh, it's amazing to be here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Beautiful. And friends, let us know if you can hear us on Facebook. Give us a thumbs up or a little heart or whatever you'd like to share with us. And uh, then we know that you can hear us. And if along this conversation you have any questions, uh, please post them in the comment section and then we will do our best to get to it. Um, it's, it will be wonderful to hear about Henry, about your life and how things are going for you. Our topic that we've picked up from the group is uh, from the Bright Group, which is a free group that we're offering for everybody who wants to find out more about the training. And the topics we've picked up there were how to access uh, innate inner peace, which all of us kind of know exists within us, but we don't know maybe how to access it and uh, how to find freedom from suffering. So we'll talk about those topics and much more today. And Henry, let's dive right in there. Uh, so when and how did you come across the Balanced View training and um, maybe just share a little more about where you were at in life, what you were up to at the time and how it all happened that you stumbled <laughs> across this, this training? Sure, yeah, well, um... It was about seven or eight years ago. Um, I was born in London and I've been living in London for 34 years or so. I'm now 42, so yeah. Um, and yeah, I came to Bristol really, um, well, I met, I, met, I met the training, I met Balanced View in Bristol um, very early on once I arrived here. Um, maybe Bristol's that kind of city, you can just find your feet very quickly. I certainly did. I just came straight into this uh, teaching, which was exactly what I was, um, whether I knew it or not, looking for. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'd been, I'd been 15 years or so as a singer-songwriter in London. I was born in London, like I said, and um, I, was, I, was, um, I was absolutely exhausted, basically, <laughs> uh, by the time I came to Bristol. You know, in a way, I just, I didn't really know it or think about it like that. Um, you know, I've come from a very lovely background, very supportive family. Um, you know, lots of, uh, lots of great things to support me in life. But I was on a very solitary trajectory with my music career. And um, in a way, I was exploring. That was my version of seeking. I never actually did any other formal seeking, so to speak. Um, I was really looking for the right lifestyle and the way to live through writing about it. Um, so I was prolifically writing songs and in a way I also just wanted to know if I could do that I was just curious could I write songs uh, for a living or just in general and um yeah I, I set myself just a crazy challenge in life I was very privileged I've been privately educated you know I felt like many doors could have been open for me in life but I didn't want to walk through any of them <laughs> at least when I came into the working world I just couldn't see my place there at all and um, friends of mine went off into all sorts of industries and I I of all the things in life loved music the most so I I I just poured myself into that and in a way it was a skillful way of remaining completely independent <laughs> from um yeah from our modern day institutions and workplaces and just staying out of it and uh, i think that was where my search really started was um with mm. deciding on music as a career so you were basically in music you were finding from what i'm hearing you were finding some level of fulfillment but also some level of like um, like seeking always more and not quite finding. And at the same time, it also sounds like there was some rebelliousness in there. Like you had all those doors, but you just didn't want to go through any of it. 
Yeah. <laughs> is, is that right? Or yeah, I can't really explain that. I mean, in, in a way, I feel like a kind of rogue, um, a rogue human or something. <laughs> so, you know, there's something just hell bent on um, on on truth, you know. And I, I really clung on to that um, when I when I felt like my life didn't make any sense. Like <laughs> like you brilliantly summarized, you know, in a way. I didn't, I didn't really know why that was happening and um, why I wasn't just taking advantage of many times that would come up for me, the story of like, why don't I just take full advantage of these incredible circumstances? Why is that not palatable to me? Why is that not attractive to me? Why is that not exciting to me? Why can't I just do what basically all of my friends did, which was to go into some sort of career and have a very conventional and, um, you know, successful and, and happy seeming lives. So why, why couldn't I do that? Um, so yeah, that was, but there was definitely at those low points. Um, yeah, there was just something about life the way it is, which just didn't stack up for me at all. And um, uh, in, in terms of how it was being played out around me and um, the way it would go if I were to pick up with one of those companies or start working in that way and living in London in that way, formulating my life in those ways, it just didn't add up. And I, I was prepared to kind of hold on to that really yeah to the point where I got to which was coming to Bristol and you know I came to Bristol looking for just a shift in gear I wanted to live out of the capital city uh far less kind of mania generally of people just um you know it's a subtle mania as well like I was in the music business but still it, I'd say it's just as manic as being in um a stockbroker or something you know it's it's the same game going on in a different way you know how many myspace hits did i have or whatever it was likes and and you know was i signed and you know it was just as horrendous in that way the pressures and the need for it to be a particular way as any other um career path but um yeah it was really interesting i often have looked back on those moments of reflection in the last eight years when I really was finding it challenging and going, wow, why don't I just make my life simple and do what I'm told, basically. Um, but there was something there that I couldn't really like, I couldn't give up on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what happened in Bristol? Like, did, did your change of circumstance in itself already help or how you know, how, how different was Bristol from London other than, you know, yeah. obviously <laughs> less people and, and all of that, but how, what impact did that in itself have on your, on your, like, what was going through your head? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, Bristol's a really lovely city. It's a great size. I'd, I'd say it's a more, um, a generally more healthy sort of uh, urban environment to live in than a really manic city. But of course, the bottom line is that the environment makes no difference at all. Like what I've discovered, I mean, coming to Bristol, I, I could have yo-yoed all my life between the city and the country. I was born in the city, but I very much had kind of country leanings. And I, I really could have gone, I went and lived in the sticks for a while, so to speak, in the middle of Oxfordshire, it was in the middle of nowhere. And, um, you know, I very soon found out what that was like as well. You know, it came with its own challenges and so on. Uh, Bristol is lovely and sometimes when I'm sharing about my life now people think that I'm that maybe it's Bristol that's made the difference and I, I'm keen to point out if they're open to hearing more that that's not the case you know I think Bristol's great I also think London's great um, you know I think anywhere's great now basically and that that's that that is also a great shift in me um I, could, I would have gone between the two. I don't know where I would have ended up. And I think we all just end up wherever we end up. But now I just feel like I could be anywhere. But Bristol definitely was absolutely game changing because it was the home of this community, you know, a community of people that were um, engaging in bright and balanced view and, and this kind of uh, training. So that that was that was the significant um, game changer in in the move but it was funny you know I moved to Bristol for a change of pace I, I I was very vague about it I just wanted to hear a different message really to my background I couldn't cling on to my friendship group anymore they were living a completely different way to me and I didn't I didn't I wasn't taking any leadership from them and my family background and generally my so I, I needed a, I needed to hear something new and I came straight into this which was absolutely <laughs> absolutely perfect and um 
Yeah, a dream come true in, in ways I couldn't begin to express, but um, maybe we'll have a stab at it in the next half hour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it seems you just, I mean, this is like a, a perfect pass uh, to to just, you know, take it from here. So uh, you came to Bristol and started to hear about Balanced View pretty soon or and, and how did you how did you hear about it and how did it go from there? Yeah, well, it was called Great Freedom then. So I, I, I actually was really just grabbed by those two words. I, um, it was kind of just right on the button for me with where I was at. I'd just done a little tour um, in a camper van, a crazy tour, going around the UK, turning up in pubs and telling them that I was only going to play my own music, unamplified. Um, but, you know, it was a way of getting out of the studio and getting out of London and just traveling the country. And it was full of highs and lows, basically. But it was it was great in one way. But, you know, great freedom. Just. Yeah, I, I really wanted to know who that was offering something called great freedom. I actually had no idea what it was. It could have been a, a sort of outward bound, like some sort of I don't know, some sort of nature thing. I, I, I really didn't know. Um, and, and I wouldn't have been. In, I don't think I would have stuck around very long if it was to do with that. But I, I walked in knowing very little. I walked into an open meeting here in Bristol and um, I knew a few of the people in the in the room, but I mean, I'd known them for a couple of weeks. I mean, I really came to Bristol not knowing anybody. And that was kind of the point of it. Like I said, I was wanting to just be on my own for a bit and see what else, what other messages and directions I could find in life. And um, so I knew a few people in the community and there was a great um, attraction to that um, group. Again, it's more in retrospect than at the time, but I actually played a, a, an open mic night. And um, now that I know all of the people, I can remember a group of Balanced View participants coming into that, into that show. Very little, like a little sweet, beautiful open mic night, but it's a tiny little room, dark room up in the top of this pub in, in um Bristol and a group came in and I just uh, I, some of them are my my some of my dearest friends now but I, I just remember the aura around them they were a very merry and um, very um, yeah just very obviously an intimately connected group whether they were in intimate relationships with each other or not you know there was one couple there were others that weren't couples, but there was just a way that they were with each other as a group, which was completely distinct to everybody else in the room. And um, I, I just rem I can remember again, and more in retrospect, just having my attention drawn by them whilst I was watching some of the other performers, and and then when I was singing myself you know they were right in front of me and it, they were just a very memorable group and I actually don't really remember anyone else in the room apart from the um the woman who was hosting the night who's a friend as well but um yeah so you know the, the community were very um magnetizing there was something about them which um which I now know much better you know I've been involved in this community for many years now and um met many people worldwide who are involved in it and I see the same thing in all of them you know, there's the same sense of stability and uh, wellness in what they're doing in life and a settledness and a peace. And, um, yeah, I'm interested in also the lack of suffering. I mean, for me, in terms of the tagline of the talk, I, suffering is something that I didn't think uh, that's the sort of thing that happens to countries that are war-torn or something. And in my mind, that would have been how I would have related to that word. But um, it's only through coming to this teaching and this training and um, starting to look at my own life that I could see the extent of my own suffering, which was a great revelation, a complete revelation to me. Um, I also don't, I don't think because my life was so good before, I don't think I really allowed myself to consider that my suffering could be worth anything when so many other people in the world had had it so much worse i mean so so much worse and so i i didn't allow myself to really acknowledge any of my own suffering and um you know i'm very pleased to come to this particular teaching and not be doing that in an indulgent way <laughs> i also am not interested in doing that um but um it's been very very um well it's been essential to me to acknowledge my own suffering yeah mm. 
And and what was that for you? So when you when you when you started looking at that more, um, where did you see like as this you know how you've described your life today as like privileged, um, not just privileged as in not being in a country that is war torn, but also even within the UK, coming from a good background, having had private education, like you had all the like the red carpet was rolled out for you and. Um, so what what would you describe were aspects of, of, of your suffering that you came in touch with? Yeah, I mean, uh, there was a huge ongoing project, which was my life. You know, that was a, a very solitary project, like I, I, um, like I said. Um, just the, the endless struggling to make something of my life. And I suppose in that is also like a life purpose a big question mark about what the point was for myself and for anyone. And the point for me definitely wasn't going to be making lots of money so that my kids could have their own swimming pool. You know, I had that role modeled to me by, you know, dear um, relations and friends and um, yeah, all sorts of people around me, school friends who had that sort of extent of privilege, which wasn't mine, but um, you know, I knew that wasn't, what I wanted to pour my life energy into. Um, and so instead I went the other route, which is the complete sort of poor person, <laughs> a songwriter route. Um, you know, so I was caught up in money um, stuff, whether I liked it or not, um, which was also interesting to see that I couldn't get away from that, um, however much I tried. Um, but yeah. So the, caught up yeah. meaning not okay. having enough money or yeah. always... Or finding having to find ways to make money yeah and and um you know feeling i suppose a great deal of resentment about um everyone being supported in their conventional lives whereas for me you know it was very hard to make things work just to make my life basically stable and um clear and yeah reliable financially and and otherwise but um uh yeah, I mean, it was, um, how else to summarize my <laughs> suffering? I mean, you know, um, many relationships. I mean, there are so many areas of life to look at, like ways that I tried to support myself and be well. Um, intimate relationships, definitely. Um, and yeah, just in there again, just things having to be a particular way, just having... Um, you know, really an impossible horizon, whether it's career or intimate relationships or um, uh, the experiences I was having, how well received my music was or, um, um, yeah, status and identity, just all of that was really um, going in a very difficult direction by the time I was in my mid-30s. But I was very stubborn, as you've also <laughs> identified, you know, I was rebellious and... Um, uh um uh sorry yeah so um yeah all of, all, all of mm. those things also were um uh at play it was um so yeah. the suffering really was you could say was more of a mental thing like the suffering really you weren't suffering necessarily in a, like a physical circumstantial type of way but more as in what's going on like in your in your head, like having to find your purpose, um, not wanting this, not wanting that, but really wanting something that you didn't quite know how to get. And so more that kind of occupation with your own thoughts and emotions, basically, and trying to sort those out and to put your life together. Exactly, exactly. I mean, it was very internalized. And, um, you know, I, I, had a natural optimism in life i'm naturally a very um positive person um and so i went on for a long time just um bloody mindedly you know um going about what i thought was a way out a way out of something which was to me a just it just looked like nothing but a trap you know it looked like a real trap for me personally the working world, the way, you know, the, the, everything just looked a bit alien to me. And I know this is probably not true of everybody, but maybe some of the people who are listening may relate. It just, everything about the package looked um, 
like something that was going to lead me away from finding what I really wanted to find. And in the end, you know, I was right. <laughs> like, I, I really, I, fi- I feel like finding this has been um, coming a long way away from where I, w- where I started out. I've really traveled a long way to find this. And, um, you know, it's been an ab- the absolute fulfillment of so many things that I couldn't couldn't say I couldn't begin to quantify like even now it's so hard to I mean it's very easy to share about it but it's you know it's hard to say exactly it's, it's everything everything about um uh, my life as it was was I mean the, the me project so to speak was in a real dire state by the time I came to the training and I'm I'm very very grateful for that because it made me open to this in a way that I don't know if I would have been had I taken a more conventional route. And um, yeah, the the benefits I now see in my life also in terms of my career. I mean, there's a, you know, I have a really, um, yeah, I've really turned my life around in these last seven, eight years in a way that was inconceivable to me um, at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm now a teacher, so I teach teenagers and I'm, um, I'm very, very passionate about education, which is also something that's crept up on me. I've been 100% music all the way whilst teaching on this on the side since I started doing uh, music, and I'm so teaching's always been there, and I've always loved, I've always, I've always liked it, but I think I just downplayed that, and I was really stuck in the identity of you know I'm going to be a singer songwriter and change the world in that sort of way or whatever it is and um, change my own life in that way too and um, I just a a great maturity and really like I mean in a way finally some maturity has come about in my working life where I really feel like there are so many glorious opportunities for me and things that I'm exploring now you know we're, we're interested to start up a a school for my um, I have two children and um, we're homeschooling in a small group and yeah so we're really looking at the education system the way I teach uh, teenagers which is kind of tutoring and private mentoring is um is also based on those kind of principles of how I feel education would be best and so we're having a good look at the education system and enjoying that and yeah it's just been a um amazing to see music finally to be able to put down my guitar and stop seeking that sort of well-being from that Mm. I would I would perpetually reach for my guitar and it had to be the next song to make me feel good really and um without that I was quite lost you know same as the girlfriend If, if it wasn't all going well in the intimate relationship you know, then then there was that. Or if I wasn't living in the right place, maybe I should be in the country, not in the city. And it was all like that. You know, there was always something mm-hmm. that um that seemed to need to change. Or, the seeking or, seeking in the next circumstance to find what f- felt like it was lacking right now. Mm-hmm. 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 So um just going back quickly to the time that you then were, you know, like I could literally see that open mic room there that you described where you where you saw what today are many of your friends uh and but what was it initially that you found so the community the the people who showed up for the teaching also you found them magnetizing you said Mm. um what was the like initial part that clicked for you with the teaching so as you showed up for your first uh, open meeting there in in bristol and then you know began to i don't know what happened like did you just come back a few times and then it like dawned on you and then what was that like what what was it for you that that clicked i mean now we heard the seven year turnaround but what was it in this very beginning that you found there is something there that is worth exploring more yeah i mean it well it it hit me straight away and and it again it was it's more in looking back on it than at the time you know it's very subtle but my first open meeting um i was very i was very struck by the invitation just to relax i'd never ever heard 
as a lifestyle choice <laughs> to relax in all circumstances. I'd never heard that. And, um, you know, I'd come from a background that was much more like hard graft, struggle, effort. That's what, that's what gets you there, um, wherever there is for you. Um, so that that invitation was very powerful and obviously it wasn't just being asked to relax it was being asked to relax in the context of the teaching in general so um uh yeah i mean that 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 was just stunning for me i just i just something at that moment was like a real gateway a door opening up where i was like wow all of my attempts <laughs> have been outside of that innate intelligence all of my attempts so far have been of the struggling kind you know and whilst i was being a musician i wasn't being a like a dosser i wasn't just a dropper kind of hanging out just um i don't know i was i was very driven and i was very highly strung in a way with a very chilled out exterior but i was really working hard you know um so that was really stunning and also then when the when the empowerments were offered um the foundational training of uh, the balance view foundation training that the empowerments um it was it was offered down in cornwall down down on the beach and um you know i'm a, I'm a keen surfer i was a keen surfer before i became a father and stopped doing it so much but i was surfing a lot and you know it was just I, I convinced myself maybe a bit like I've convinced myself that I was a musician and never interested in teaching when actually I love teaching, but I, I, I just convinced myself, yeah, well, you know, it's, it's going to be two weeks of the empowerments, but it'll also be loads of surfing. And I, I just made any number of excuses to myself basically, but, but the, the fact was that I just, I just couldn't resist coming back. I couldn't resist coming back. There was nothing else I could think of doing in Bristol in a city where I didn't know very many people. There weren't, there weren't in some ways that many distractions for me. Um, but I, I just couldn't conceive of doing anything else with that hour on a Sunday morning every week. And then that just grew into more and more um, trainings and hours here and there in, in the local community and internationally and, and, and online. It was just such an enriching way to spend my time and I knew that every single meeting I was going to and every training I was doing and every talk I was listening to you know there's an abundance of talks available for anyone interested through the website um I'm I I'm still listening to talks every day you know when I'm washing up or when I'm having lunch or um, whatever it is um that's the kind of radio I want to listen to you know <laughs> uh, when I'm shaving you know? <laughs> Yeah. And and what are you finding in them? Like what 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 does it do to you? Why 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 that and not other radio stations? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it, it just it it just relaxes me basically. It just it it immediately sets me back into that innate intelligence, um, which which I got from my first um, short moments of relaxation through the training. Um, it just reset me all, all of the media just resets me to um yeah to just feel fine to feel stable to know that all is well and really no matter what's coming up for me and that's just such a great starting point for the day you know such a great you know to to have a shave and listen to 15 minutes of of talk of a talk um and then to approach your day from there it's distinctly different to me to not having listened to the talk or having listened to the radio you know and I, I enjoy um occasionally listening to the radio and listening to other things listening to music but um yeah what really supports me most of the time are other talks yeah mm -hmm. and so you just mentioned the 12 empowerments in cornwall so you actually went there with your surfboard and you also did the 12 empowerments you weren't just surfing you did the 12 empowerments yeah yeah um anything like because that's really for for anybody who is who is new here the 12 empowerments are um the foundational training it's a 12 part um in-depth training um it's for me it's always impossible to summarize like the impact this had because it was just like so life-changing 
Um, but is there anything that you find memorable as you think back, except for the wonderful nature setting and the waves in Cornwall? I yeah. may, I actually couldn't surf them. I tried once, and I and I just hit my head on the surfboard. So I thought, okay, I I I, I won't try further. Um, but um, yeah, anything that you find memorable in terms of the results that you like you know, what changed during those, because you did them like one a day, right? It was a 12 day yeah. training. So 12 days, um, you know, coming in, coming out. Um, what was the difference for you? Well, it was a very, you know, I'm not, I'm not a very intellectual person. So I, I didn't, I mean, I, I don't really, in some ways I just don't latch onto the specifics. I don't, I don't turn much over. I just am uh, um, participating. Um, in that in an open way I suppose there's nothing much going on for me in terms of analysis so I, I don't have much to share on that front but uh, the, the the general you know it was very intense it was a, a very in a very good way it was um a very intense couple of weeks and the surfing was like a lovely um aspect to it but it was really not not the main the main feast was was in the training setting and um it was incredible to sit with a group, you know, it's a face-to-face -face, um, group, group. So we were 12 of us or so. And I suppose one of the main takeaways was to not only look at um, my own um, ways of being, my own relationships, to really stop life for two weeks and look at what I've been doing so far, how I've been acting so far, what I've been putting my energy into, how I've been defining myself, um yeah the relationships i've been avoiding or relationships that were difficult for me in life um you know like i say there was a there was a part of me that would never have acknowledged that i had any suf suffering in life whatsoever um and also there was a part of me that probably would have maintained that all my relationships were great and life is life is life is fine what have i got to complain about you know <laughs> But during the empowerments, it was amazing to see really what was going on there with some of my relationships. And for example, now, you know, my relationships with my family, you know, which have always been beautiful, but have been, uh, you know, quite strained in the last 10 years or so. And I think through my parents' concern, probably for my for me in general with uh, my music career and then also yeah, every, all of my life choices. Um, there's been such a beautiful um, uh, harmonization of those relationships and um, ever increasingly so. So um, the empowerments really started that process for me of just um, showing me what was really going on in my life um, and giving me that opportunity to just stop for a while and go, wow, like, it's not satisfying me as it is. Like, I'm obviously here for a reason. Let's have a look at why that is, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's it's an incredible process for that. There's nothing I needed to do to make that happen. Um, it's it it's the same for everybody, as far as I'm aware. You know, it just walks you through the process, and everybody gets out of it what they need to get out of it for that time. And you know, the empowerments have just been ongoing for me ever since. So that's mm. a, that's what I'm hearing is that for you, you while it was a two week time you then brought really the results and that the, the 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 benefits and that approach to life really into like into all areas of your life like you mentioned a bit before i'm just looking at the time here um but you already mentioned your relationship with your family of origin a little bit you mentioned that your career um you know changed in in that you you know you're not focusing on music anymore you're you're focusing on your on your teaching career um is there anything around those things if you just if we take your fast forward now and and look at your life today um we started out with like where your suffering was mostly in your mind where you try to sort out your life and you know find out like what is the purpose of my life why am i here um, why can I not just enjoy all the things that have been given to me? These kinds of things. Um, you came face to face with some aspects of your suffering. 
um, that you hadn't even recognized before. But from what I'm understanding in the empowerments, you saw that just the fact that you didn't recognize it did not mean that you didn't have an impact on the way on your lifestyle choices. So it was like more subtly informing certain decision making um, that then by facing it, again, I'm tell me if, if, if I'm off there, but that's what it sounds to me. By facing it, you really were able to make more conscious decisions on what you actually wanted to do with your life rather than being on that autopilot in that tunnel or on those rails that you've been on, that you've been on before. So um, how, how did that lead to, what is it today, uh, April 8th, 2018? Like where, where did all that bring you? Yeah, I mean, it's exactly right. First of all, your, your summary is perfect. I wouldn't change a word of it. That's exactly how it was for me. Um, and yeah, I mean, in terms of my, um, I mean, I think of it in terms of maturity, just like this, the, 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 the opportunity to just settle down, just to calm down and make good rational decisions um, and to know what I wanted. Um, just it's been very slow and organic, but I, I was pretty caught up in the mania of life, um, you know, for, for the whole of my life, really, at least in my adult life. And um, good decision making was hard to come by. Like I say, I felt like a rogue, you know, in a way I look back and it was like a sort of rogue operating system. There was something I was really hell bent on and it just didn't add up at all. And um now what I see is that, um, yeah, just settling into settling into this lifestyle choice, you know, having a more, um, yeah, the capacity has just grown and grown. My capacity to make good decisions, to know what I, to know my own abilities as well, to be able to make great career choices, to know how to develop my business, um, to be going for it, to feel a, a great sense of life purpose, which I was you know, pretty unable to find unless it was something completely amazing. You know, it had to be like off the scale amazing, hence the choice of a music career, which I kind of knew was crazy at the time. But, um, you know, uh, it was that it had to be on that scale for me. I felt very capable. Um, I felt really like there was something, a great life out there for me where I could really deliver for myself and for others. And, you know, now, now I just see that all around me and everything I'm doing, education, you know, has opened up as a vast field that I, I know I will spend the rest of my life dedicated to. And I, I just, I don't, I don't know how I would have settled down <laughs> without this opportunity to have this support. And um, yeah, just to, to be able to mature, I can't explain the process, but I feel like it's just matured me. And um, it's enabled me to see what I really, really love and to be able to commit myself to something that isn't like being the greatest guy on the planet. You know, <laughs> so that's, you know it, it sort of had it, it was it was on that sort of scale, like being the best out there ever. You know, it was just impossible. And, um, you know, there's a very beautiful flip side to that as well, which is where I. I now, um, and this was a great takeaway from the empowerments. Um, I now feel like I really wholeheartedly see the brilliance in everybody. Um, and I mean, before I could cry to speak about it, but before really it was like uh, a game of making sure I was on the top and everybody else finding their weaknesses or, you know, if I found someone that I admired, then it would be, again, uh, jealousy or like trying to convince myself somehow that I, I am still just as good as them, kind of, you know. And um, it was a horrible, you know, in terms of suffering, there's a great example that was pervasive in my life experience. Um, yeah, and it's, it's just stunning now. It's completely stunning now to... Um, really feel so connected to all beings um and that that's really everybody just people in the street people i don't even know people who are serving me in some way shops and restaurants or and also just my closest friends you know because there's also uh great potential for dynamics of jealousy and envy and um uh that sort of comparison 
also in our our dearest friendships and in fact maybe even more so <laughs> so um yeah you know that that that's also been incredible just to see how to really genuinely see how amazing everybody is and to know that's also true for me and um yeah that's one dynamic for the planet that i feel could do with some shifting you know i think that's something that's very prevalent but um uh certainly it was for me mm. wow that's so beautiful henry and I love um, this is uh, maybe we, we we can have a part two of this conversation where we go more into what you're doing today, because I know you're not only educating and tutoring yourself, you're even helping others to do that in a, you know, in a more sustainable and beneficial way. So you immediately took on the opportunity to not keep that for yourself because you were just talking about, you know, jealousy or envy or something, you were, you were moved to share that and help others with it, which is like completely amazing. So yeah, really, really beautiful. I love how practical these, these results have been in your life. Mm. Amazing. Yeah. And I, I really feel like that's become my life purpose, you know, in some ways, I feel like that's, our natural life purpose is to serve each other, <clears throat> to serve other people, ourselves and others. And I, I just, you know, those kind of business opportunities have only come about from the fact that I can just see that other tutors need help. And I, I just feel heart moved to help them. And of course, it needs to be a sustainable business as well. And we're working on that. But, um, you know, um, in all ways um, with my teaching that's also what's really illuminated my teaching you know I just couldn't really get into being a tutor it never sounded like it was enough but you know one person in front of me that I really feel I can help I just pour myself into that hour with them now with no holding back and um, I know I was tutoring before when I was a musician and it was very often clock watching, when's this session going to be over? I just want my money in to get out of here. You know, it depends. In a bad session, that's how it was. Um, I needed, uh, you know, I needed the money and there we were. And they didn't even maybe even want to be there in the first place. I didn't have my business sorted out in that way. I was turning up in all sorts of places just to teach anyone. But now I, you know, now I really go after the people I know I can benefit the most. And so I, I teach people who are really going to benefit from being with me. And so that's great for both of us. We both want to be there and yeah, have a really amazing time um, in that role, um, mm -hmm. which has been a great shift, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, I can tell there is a lot of opening of skillful means through what you have discovered for yourself. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Wow, Henry, we're at the end of our time together. I could go on forever, literally. <laughs> Me too. such an inspiring life uh, thank you for sharing i was tracking the comments here a bit as we as we spoke and um thanks all for sharing um and and giving your comments and hearts and kudos uh you had a lot of heart bursts there that came across my screen and a lot of gratitude henry thanks so much for showing up here and um just sharing so openly and refreshingly about your about your experience uh, it's been a great pleasure great mm -hmm. privilege to you uh, thank you for the opportunity you yeah. you're welcome let's do part two sometime soon yeah and, I look forward to it. <laughs> great and for everybody who's new here and maybe you you know you were intrigued or like henry shared that he was magnetized um, by something that he couldn't even put his finger on or words to um if you're new here, we also post a link in the post in the um, description of this video and in the link sections in the comments below. Uh, you can participate in a free online training. Um, we'll have a link for that. And if you have been around for some time and you're wondering what your next steps could be so that you could end up having such an impact like Henry has today and find and do that with just complete relaxation and that kind of smile on your face, then book a call with me or me. We give these um, free breakthrough sessions that we're inviting you to. And we'd love to look at your life together, look at what's working, what's not working, and then really um, show you a way of how you can 
reach this kind of potential where you have peace of mind, you are free from suffering, but then that's just the starting place into a life of real flourishing and fulfillment, as we just heard from, from Henry. So we'll have that link in there as well in the posts and comment section. So depending on, on how much you already know and how ready you are for the next step, you can participate in the online training or, and, or book a call with us. And we'd love to hear from you also if you watch the replay, um, if you leave any questions there, then we'll be happy to comment on those. All right, so good to be together today. Thanks again, really from my heart, Henry, that was totally beautiful and have a happy restful day there, wherever you might be, friends. Thank you so much, Jeffrey.